four men are facing felony theft from vehicle charges in connection with a string of thefts in St. Louis Park. St. Louis Park police were dispatched to an apartment complex in the early morning hours of October 22nd where they found the men rummaging through a car in the parking lot. Police located a getaway van close by and found numerous items that had been reported stolen from cars in St. Louis Park. The four men have lengthy criminal records and are currently in custody on felony charges. Welcome to Park Update, the weekly show that gives you the latest St. Louis Park news. I'm Scott Smith. The 2009 general election will take place on Tuesday, November 3rd. Polls open at all 17 precincts at 7 a.m. and stay open until 8 p.m. Voters will be casting ballots for city council member candidates in each of the four wards, in addition to school board candidates in the St. Louis Park School District. All offices are nonpartisan, and candidates who are elected will take office in January 2010. Visit www.parktv.org and follow the link for complete election information on candidates and precinct locations. John Alexander, the head of Groves Academy, is receiving recognition for his efforts to improve reading instruction for all Minnesota students. Alexander was recognized at the state capitol this past Monday for his reading efforts and support in groundbreaking literacy legislation signed into law this past legislative session. Groves Academy, located off Highway 100 and Minnetonka Boulevard, is a private, independent day school for students who have learning disabilities or attention disorders. Construction is underway at Benilde St. Margaret's new athletic facility. Fundraising efforts for the new artificial turf field started two years ago, and about $2.6 million has been raised for the renovation. The new field will allow for more practice space and multiple sports to play games on the field year-round. In the meantime, athletic teams have been playing their games at area schools. The new turf field should be completed by next year. St. Louis Park has been selected as one of five cities to participate in the Green Step Demonstration Cities program. The voluntary program aims to provide cities with a pathway to greater sustainability and offer cost-effective steps which focus on greenhouse gas reduction. Cities were selected by the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and Urban Land Institute of Minnesota. Both agencies will work with cities to assess how effective their green practices are. The project will begin this fall in St. Louis Park, Edina, Falcon Heights, and Victoria, and will conclude in 2010. Both Noodles and & Company and Jimmy John's will be opening next week at the new West End development. Noodles & Company will open on November 24th at 10.30 a.m., in celebration, Noodles will host a pre-opening fundraiser on November 3rd from 4 to 7 p.m. 100% of the proceeds will benefit the Holy Family Academy Catholic School located in St. Louis Park. A correction on last week's program, we reported that Toby Keith's I Love This Bar will open next month. The restaurant is actually expected to open next spring at the West End. Do not be alarmed if an inspector from Centerpoint Energy drops in for a gas meter inspection without warning. The company is in the process of cold calling to check gas meters that are located inside homes. Inspectors checking meters wear lime green safety vests and Centerpoint picture IDs. If you have a meter inside and it has not been read, expect a visit from an inspector. The Minnesota High School Press Association has awarded St. Louis Park High School and Benilde St. Margaret's for their outstanding newspapers at its recent high school journalism convention at the University of Minnesota. St. Louis Park took first place in Best of Show for their newspaper, The Echo, and Benilde St. Margaret's took first place for their newspaper website, The Knight Errant. Be sure to visit www.parktv.org for a complete list of the winners. That's the latest news in the park. Still to come, news in the neighborhood, high school sports scores, and the History Minute. Up next, Jamie Zwilling has the latest City Council news. A report received by the City Council this week shows the St. Louis Park housing market continues to fare better than many other cities during the current market downturn. Of the 100 submarket areas reported by the Minneapolis Association of Realtors, St. Louis Park is currently ranked 12th lowest in terms of market share of lender-mediated listings, compared to 18th one year ago. Foreclosures are also down significantly from this time last year. The city is keeping close tabs on the housing situation through its Property Foreclosure Work Group. The group is comprised of staff from all city departments and meets regularly to discuss current statistics, maintenance, and safety issues. Finally, one more reminder that City Council and School Board elections will be held Tuesday, November 3rd. 
Unofficial election results will be posted on the city website and Cablecast on Civic Channel 17 live as they become available. I'm Jamie Zwilling and that's your Council Update. The melodies of St. Louis Park community bands began more than a century ago in the park. And if you listen very closely, you can hear the music on the History Minute. In 1891, a band consisting of 10 men, later enlarged to 35, usually played at the State Fair, and the 4th of July celebrations were always a big affair. For several years, the band had no place to meet or practice, and the band of the village went by the wayside. On September 21, 1911, the Journal reported on the Village Harvest Festival and Band Carnival. The celebration brought the entire population of the village to Oddfellow Hall, where the band, bedecked in gay uniforms, played, and the citizens made speeches congratulatory of the achievement of having completed the stringing of electric lights along the main streets. Another article dated July 13, 1940, tells us that one Clyde Wolford proposed that a St. Louis Park band be formed. In 1941, it is noted that St. Louis Park Municipal Band performed as part of the Miss St. Louis Park contest that year. In 1955, it is noted as well that there was no city band. Many years went by with no band, but a community band movement was spreading throughout the suburbs. Another effort was made, this time by calling people who were identified in old volumes of the Echoon as having been in high school band. In 2006, the band had over 50 members. Over one third of the members have been with the band for 20 years or more. Concerts are given year round, and the group has played at Orchestra Hall several times and they also perform in the holiday concert at the high school each year. Jim Rhodes, a longtime member of the community band, started a program called Gift of Music in 1991. This program provides donated musical instruments to students who might otherwise not be able to afford them. Over 400 instruments have been refurbished and donated along with lessons. The band strives to demonstrate to young people that music can be a lifelong pursuit, not just ending in high school. To donate an instrument, follow the link to the St. Louis Park Community Band at parktv.org. Up next, Leslie Farrell has news in the neighborhood. Halloween parties will be held in several neighborhoods. The Elliott neighborhood will hold their Halloween party on October 30th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Elliott Art Center, located on Cedar Lake Road. Brooklawn's annual Halloween party will be held on Saturday, October 31st from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Methodist Hospital Heart and Vascular Center Auditorium. Be sure to get out for these fun Halloween activities. The City of St. Louis Park is now on Facebook. Become a fan of the city and receive all the current news happening in the park. Visit our website at www.parktv.org and click on the link to become a fan of the park on Facebook. Minnesota's winter is almost upon us, meaning winter parking restrictions go into effect. Restrictions go into effect any time more than three inches of snow falls. Vehicles parked on unplugged streets can be ticketed and towed. Don't wait for a snow emergency to move your car. A friendly reminder that daylight savings time ends and standard time goes into effect on Sunday, November 1st at 2 a.m. So set your clocks back one hour before you go to bed on Saturday. I'm Leslie Farrell and that's your news in the neighborhood. Now here's a look at high school sports scores. We do appreciate you watching Park Update. For Leslie Farrell and Jamie Zwilling, I'm Scott Smith. We'll see you again next week.